Good afternoon, everybody. I am happy to be here. And welcome. I don't. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm John, Celine's husband, and I'm here to introduce Celine. It's very simple. Celine walks the talk, she does the research, she practices, she puts it in place, and she makes it happen. So everything she's telling you, based in research, and it works. She's been doing it. And we've been doing this together for three years, three months, and I don't know how many days. So here she is, and enjoy your session. Thank you, my husband. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share with you my passion, and especially a topic that is very dear to me, depression. This is a disclaimer that will make my lawyer happy. As I share the information and because it's about depression, I'll be very passionate uh, about some of the statement that I will make. Please remember, I am not a medical doctor. Whatever you choose to do, check with your doctor first. The lawyer is going to be happy. So one thing that I would like to know before I, get, I, I dive in is, can you share with me a little bit uh, in the next 45 minutes, what you would like to accomplish? Boo, what would you like to accomplish? And I think- um, I'd, like to, I'd like to learn more about how I can improve um, my joy during these times. I think it can be very stressful and that is my goal to be less stressful, less stress. Thank you very much. Laura, uh, Boo, can you unmute Laura uh, for Laura to share? what you would like to accomplish during this time here. Okay, Laura is on mute. Okay, so I'm not going to delay. We've had some technical difficulties. So let's dive right in. I want Hi, to so, sorry. I, my husband called right in the middle and so I was trying to get back to you and unmuted. Um, I, just really, I, I not only know Celine and know the integrity, her story, her testimony, John's testimony, um, but it's, I think most of us are understanding it's more important than ever to, you know, not just slam down a bunch of supplements, you know, these days. We've got to make sure our inner being uh, are from the foods we eat and the way we take care of ourselves is not only keeping us healthy and keeping all sorts of, you know, we won't even say the name, viruses and other stuff away, but it really is, affects all disease. And if we can do these things that Celine is recommending, even if it's starting at baby steps, man, it's going to make such a tremendous difference. And that's, that's why I'm so glad she's bringing this message. And what's amazing is so many other programs are full of, you know, eat this, eat this, or do this sort of thing, or take all this stuff. But, you know, this is this is stuff that tastes good at fun because the people, when stress and depression comes, people want comfort food. So that's part of it, along with, and she's, she's been there. So you'll hear her story, and I'll shut up now. <laughs> so I'm going to put you, Sandra, on the spot. Tell me one thing that you'd like to see accomplished during our time together here. Oh, Celine, thank you so much for um, inviting me. I'm just so much looking forward to learning more about, I mean, I've always been intrigued with the whole cook along uh, idea and I'd love to learn some new um, tricks and, and different things in the kitchen to create some healthy meals for my family. And something that I've noticed in um, your comments before is that you know how to cook with different spices and different things that can bring alive the flavor of food and make it healthy. And so I'm really interested in learning those things. 
Thank you. Yes, you will get the opportunity, the last 20 minutes of the talk. We will make two desserts. Okay, so our time together, I'll share my story and I'll share with you what the research is saying about lifestyle and mental illness and how do you go beyond today? Of course, I have to do an infomercial and we'll cook along two desserts. So my story has four stages, three stages. I was starting to go on a diet when I was 12 because of some tragic events that happened in my life. And I was clinically diagnosed with depression when I was age 15. This is a story that would be an interesting story for my African friends. I was very lucky. And in 1983, at age 19, after the birth of my first child with postpartum depression and my dream, broken heart, broken everything, I hit rock bottom. Let me share with you what I mean by hitting rock bottom because I'll repeat it. It means I was considering killing myself, okay? I was able to get out of it. The second stage, my second daughter was born, another episode of postpartum depression, my professional dream fully shattered. 1999, it was not enough. My father that I loved so much passed away and I collapsed again. I hit rock bottom. I was that close when my sister called me and she heard my voice, she said, and she started begging me to go see a doctor. And I went in, I saw a doctor. That time he put me on medication and some counseling. Prozac, I did the research on Prozac. You see, I hate medication. I do not like medication. Anything I put on my mouth, I'm like, what is it? What are those chemicals? And when I read the side effect of Prozac, my attitude is, if the disease doesn't kill me, the medication will kill me. I was born with a small heart defect. Prozac has an impact on my heart. I am being suicidal and it's impairing my judgment and my thinking. No, this medication is not for me. I, open, I, I flushed it and I was going to struggle again through it and figure out how to get out of depression. The final episode happened in 2015 after I was in Canada. I had gained weight, went from size four, six to size 16, eight, size six, eight to size 16, 18 high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux, and they were doing the pre-ops for surgery. And I collapsed. I collapsed again. I was going to be done with my life. You see, suicide is the number 10 killer in America. Way down in the bottom there. But what they don't, and I realize that I'm Catholic. I cannot do that because the research is showing when you kill yourself, the people in your family, especially your children, you increase their chances for killing themselves. I cannot do that to my girls. And I'm Catholic and I, don't want, I do not want to go to hell. So I had to find an answer. 40 million people suffer from that depression. It's on the shadow. It's an awful disease, really, really awful. What is it? When you ask people, actually the Bible, yes, they talk about depression in the Bible. So read Psalm 55, David talking about the terrors of death, his heart, the anguish, he's being overwhelmed far from the tempest, the storm. This is how you feel, but it is inside you. And when you ask people, if I ask you, what, what does depression feel like? He will say sadness. No, it is more than sadness. Here are the emotions that come with it. Hopelessness, self-loathing. You beat yourself. You are anxious. You are 
a mess and it is all inside of you. Those are beautiful colors. It doesn't really reflect what is going on. This is how it is. Because you're going through all of those emotions. It's there in your mind and they loop and they go and they loop and you there and you are not physically tired, but you are emotionally tired. Everything become extremely heavy. I have found myself locked into my bedroom where for days I couldn't talk to my husband. With the weight gain, the acid reflux, the cholesterol, the high cholesterol, the high blood pressure, I knew I was in trouble. And I thought if I lose weight, the depression will go away. So I started doing the research again and found what is called lifestyle medicine. What is it? What you choose to put in your mouth in terms of food, alcohol, drugs, like medications and drugs, like the other drugs, gossip, what you do with your body in terms of sleeping, exercising, what you do with your mind in terms of your connection to the high power, to God, to Jesus, in our case, Christian, and your lack of forgiveness, and the environment you live in, the people in Flint, Michigan, they live in a place where the water is not safe. All of that is your lifestyle and contribute to your health. This is what is called lifestyle medicine. And if you manage it in partnership with your doctor, you, you have some results. I embark on that, on that. Surprise, surprise. After a few weeks, you see, I wear glasses. Where are my glasses? Anyway, I wear glasses. And if you've been to the oph ophthalmologist, they change the lenses and things are foggy and then it become clear. After a few weeks adapting that lifestyle, I remember exactly where we were driving on the highway. And I look at my husband and I'm like, wow, the colors are so vibrant. After a few weeks of adapting the principles of lifestyle medicine, curiosity, kicked in. I'm like, I knew with lifestyle medicine, I could reverse the high blood pressure, the acid reflux, the cholesterol, but I didn't know much about the mental illness part of it. And I start digging. You see, lifestyle medicine is evidence-based and scientifically proven. And I found plenty, plenty of resources, information that says, yes, when you actually adapt that lifestyle, it helps with depression, anxiety, Alzheimer, all the mental diseases. I was more curious. I have to figure out more. You see, for depression, they say, and I believe with them and I agree with them, it's your entire lifestyle. You see lifestyle medicine, it is not the diet. The diet is one part of it, but everything else is extremely important. Today in our conversation, I will, and I don't like the word diet. I like the word nutrition. It is not just the nutrition. Everything else is as important. Today in our conversation, because we have just 45 minutes, I will talk more about the nutrition. The words like, you know, fiber, gut, microbiome, animal thing, all this comes into play when we talk about that nutrition. So today I have just selected a few that I will address to give you an idea about that nutrition and your mental illness and what you can start doing right away. Hmm. I missed, I have a set of slides that I have missed. Okay, oh well, I missed a set of slides. There is in that research a big word called arachidonic acid. I don't know how to pronounce it. So I had a beautiful slide actually that showed the spider because in French you say araignée. So I use that mnemonic to remember that comes that big medical term, arachidonic acid. So I have hired Dr. Greger 
to explain to all of us what is that ar ar arachidonic acid and where you find it. So here it comes. Can you hear? No. Now we can. I will. I knew it was going to happen. You might have to reshare your screen and make sure you share the audio. Yeah, uh, actually, I uh, just have to do this. Come back here and do this and do this. <laughs> Uh, Boo, can you mute me on Brozovic? I don't think we can hear the hustling. On you. Okay. So if you stop sharing your screen. Okay. Heard 
Education is always good when it's repeated. Isn't it, Shade? Oh, here is my nasty uh, araignée for, for, to help me pronounce arachidonic acid. So, 10 sources. Let me repeat it again. He said it in English. I'll repeat it in French for you. Chicken. Eggs. Beef. Fish. Sausage. Franks. Pork. Hamburger. And your cold cut. Let me ask you a question. What do all have in common? All the things that we've seen in here, they have something in common in the chat or unmute yourself and give me that quick answer. Sulfates? Is it sulfates? We can hear you, Sandra. Oops. Is it sulfates? We she said sulfates. You. She said sulfates. You okay. They are all animal products. Ah. All animal product. One other question that I have for you, how many fiber, amount of fiber do we have in eggs? This question is for Boo. Boo, how, many, how much fiber do we have in eggs? No fiber. How come I cannot hear you? Oh yeah, of course I cannot hear anybody. Yes, go ahead. No fiber. No fiber. Thank you very much, Boo. There is no fiber in eggs. Fiber are only in plants. The reason why I'm talking about fiber is the second element in our mental health is our gut. We call it the second brain. The gazillions of enzymes and bacteria that we have in there is contribute to the quality of the serotonin in our brain. Have you heard, the, 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 we all know the expression, oh, gut feeling. So my gut has feeling now. So what impact? Your brain impact your gut, your gut impact your brain. What do we do to get that second brain healthy? One name, fiber, fiber, fiber. The more fiber you eat, the better your microbiome. And fiber is wonderful. And you do not find fiber in any animal product. The only place you find fiber is in plants. Your fat, the omegas. Most of us consume a lot of omega-6 coming from the meat, the oil and all. But to have a very for depression, omega-3s are where you get elements to boost your mood. People will ask you, if you're eating a plant-based, don't we just find omega-3s and the omegas in fish? The answer is yes. But where does the fish get is omegas? The fish get it from the algae. So the fish become an intermediary. I can go directly to the, uh, on the algae and eat algae to get my omega-3s. So the recommendation for you is optimize your omega-3 intake and know the foods where you have omega-3s so that you can increase it. The bulk of us don't eat enough omega-3s. Where do we find them? We usually find them in seeds, flax seeds, chia seed, walnut, hemp seed. This is where you have your omega-3s. And try to reduce 
the excess of omega-6 you consume, I've talked about that, all of the cooking oil and stuff, but my, I personally, I don't cook with any oil. And uh, I teach my customers how to, to eat, cook without any oil because you do not eat it. You, you, and you don't, frankly, you don't need it. It's my opinion. <laughs> And uh, you have a lot of uh, science on uh, how, how do we process omega-3s? What do we do? Do we have enough? And what the experts are saying, eat a balanced diet. When you're eating a, a, life, a whole food plant-based, eat it in enough balance. You'll figure out how to optimize your omega-3s. And if it does doesn't help, you still have some supplement, some supplement out there and uh, with uh, omega and vitamin D3 and vitamin B12 are the only three supplements that we take in this house. It's beneficial for your health. The research are out there. I don't have to prove it. Uh, well, in Côte d'Ivoire, Nadine, we will say, c'est vrai, c'est wow. <laughs> now, your big question is, what do I eat? Look at that. We have 80,000 edible plants out on earth available for us to eat. Variety is not an issue. We have them. You can bring them in four groups, your grains, your vegetables, your legumes, your fruits, and a handful of nuts and seeds for your fat. We all need fat. And as a whole food plant based person, we get our fat from the seeds and the nuts. But be careful, I said one handful. In another talk, I'll share with you what nut and seed did to me. What we tell people, when it comes to your health and to your nutrition and to what you put in your mouth, it has to be a love affair. Love the food that loves you back. I'm going to repeat it again. Love the food that love you back. Are you going to ask me, Celine, is it a vegan program that you're promoting here? And I look at you and I'm like, I'm Christian. I cannot, I cannot tell you not to eat animal fish and stuff like that because at the end of the day, my Lord ate fish. But what I am telling you is the fish and lamb that the Lord ate was not the, the fish and lamb loaded with antibiotics and with a whole bunch of poison that we have that is in there. So I'm telling you, if the bulk of your food is on the red side, please try to move on the greener side. The more green you eat, the better. And the reason why it's not a vegan program, vegan, it's a belief. They want to save the environment. They want to protect animals. It's a wonderful cause that they have. It is not mine. My cause is health. For example, if you want to cook and eat something with some chicken broth in a whole food plant-based movement, we tell it's perfectly OK as long as you're going to eat your food. So to saute your vegetables, if you saute that with chicken broth, it's OK. But we will tell you don't eat the actual chicken. A vegan won't touch that meal because you have chicken broth in it. So this is two big difference between vegan, vegan and whole food plant-based. And another big difference is a vegan is going to eat Oreos. Oreos is loaded with sugar and entirely processed. You'll catch me, you won't catch me even if you pay me. I won't put Oreos in my mouth, why? Because it is processed. So those are some of the big difference between vegan and whole food plant-based. Who said you'll be deprived? If you are hungry now, I am sorry. Look at all the good things that you can eat. Look at this. 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 
Look at this. Look at this. And even this chocolate pie, I make it and it is mean. <laughs> The idea of showing you all of those foods is if you embark on a whole food plant base, you are not going to deprive yourself. The taste will be there. And if you have a good coach, they'll tell you how to boost the taste of everything that you are having. So I talked to you about the side effect of Prozac. I have to talk to you about the side effect of whole food plant base. Not all, you're going to decrease your risks for all the chronic diseases that we have. Heart disease being the number one killer, you are decreasing your risk of that by 80%. I'll buy that stock. In addition, you're going to be less fatigued. You're going to be loaded with energy. I have seen my husband here acting like, you know, he is like, you know, all of that. No constipation. And Dr. Hensdil says, if you used to read the Reader Digest in the bathroom, no more, because you don't have time You go in, you go out, it's done. You don't have to deal with constipation. You're going to improve your mood and think clearly. You're going to sleep better. You're going to have less inflammation and better skin. Hmm. Now, the second big question is, Celine, how do I start? How do I get there? How do I get sustainable results? You see, people really, truly want to have a healthy lifestyle, but they all struggle with how. So what I did, I did more research. Why are they struggling with the how? After all, America is a place where we have the best medical, we have great medical doctors and plenty of them. But look at the following. Only less than 5% of American doctors spend more than 10 minutes with their, with their patients. So your doctor is not going to help you. If you go and you Google vegan recipes, you have 1.36 trillion hits. How do you start? It's overwhelming. So I put my mind as an engineer specializing in process development and, and looking at what was going on and my own story and my challenges. And I'm like, oh, bingo. It's about the process, the process, the process, the process. So I put together, I developed a process to give people some results that are sustainable, not the one thing you do for three months and then you go, no, everything you're going to do, you're going to keep it for your lifetime. I have the sound business principle of something called people change management. Change is a science and there is a process and there is a way to go through change. So I combine that and I combine Combine, of course, the principle of lifestyle medicine and whole food pen base and compassion and my own experience and my big heart and my big love for people to have a process that work. And that is designed around you, the person. It is about you, not about somebody else. It's no nonsense. It's research based. It's practical. It's realistic and it's affordable. You don't have to become a millionaire to eat healthy. You don't have to become a multi-billionaire to have a life to, to transform your lifestyle to something that will give you results. The approach I do, I use to share that process is very simple. I educate, I educate like what we've done in here, that first part of the class is the education. I give you the ability. What is ability? Ability is empowerment. And you're going to observe that at the end of the class where in the privacy of your own kitchen, you are going to make two desserts. Why? If I give you a book on swimming, you can read it all you want. At the end of the day, you still don't know how to swim. But if I take you in the kitchen and you are in the kitchen and you are doing it yourself, you are empowered, you become able. 
So this is one thing that I do. And of course, I'll support and make you accountable gently, kindly, with love and patience, because I know it's not easy. So it's a seven week program. The way it happens is we meet once a week for 90 minutes and you get some education on a general education. Every week I talk about a specific disease. I give you the ability for the holidays, for example, I am making a program around some of the food that we eat during the holidays so that you know how to make it and healthy and you enter the holiday on a strong note and you also leave the holiday healthier. And of course, a journey is best made with others. So this group in here, if you are interested in doing something together, and because you've listened to me, I have slashed my cost for the seven week program and to give it to you at 399, where you can go from that low productivity, fatigue and all, to better productivity, better mood, improve it, and learn skills that you will, you will keep for your entire lifetime. I have spoken a, a lot. So we're going to take five minutes, and we started a little bit late also. We're going to take five minutes where I'll answer some burning questions, and then we will go to the kitchen and develop a new ability. Uh, Boo, you can unmute everybody so that whoever wants to talk can talk freely. Um, everybody is free to unmute themselves. Um, but what's it called? I did not get any questions in the chat. So if, also if you have any questions, if you don't want to unmute, you can put them in the chat. Any question? Actually, there was a question for Laura. Um, they asked, what does lung, young living have any omegas? Laura? She probably, okay, we don't, she's not there, we cannot hear her. Okay, anybody has a question? Okay, so here is what we're going to do now. Uh, I have a comment. Go ahead, please. That's an amazing um, presentation, Celine. So informational, I, I learned a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sandra, I really appreciate it. Okay, so what we're going, uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch in the kitchen, okay? So I'll turn my computer and be in the kitchen with you. So the first thing we're going to do for people uh, who have done their grocery shopping, you got the grocery shopping list. Okay, let me double check actually. Um, okay. Grocery shopping, so what I do, and this is what is going to happen to class. Before every class, I give you the list of ingredients and where to buy it. And I give you what is called the mise en place, the detailed steps that you have to make prior to class. So that when you come to class, it's fast, it's easy, and I can show you. So we're going to make what I call my uh, Amanda's poach, Amanda, um, Amanda's poach pears. So with two pears, you're supposed to have done yours and cut. And I understand that some people don't know how to do a few things. I have a customer who didn't know how to peel a carrot. So sometimes I go a little bit slow on the steps. So here you cut your pear, you remove the seeds, You cut the other one in two, voila, so it's done. Okay, so whoever doesn't know how to make 
to cut the, the, the pears. Now you know. Okay, so I'm going to do half the recipe because my, it's just my husband and I. So what you do now is you take a quarter of a cup of concentrated apple juice. and a quarter of a cup of water. The same amount in water. And here is where the spices are coming in. You will use one eighth teaspoon of clove and one quarter teaspoon of vanilla. In my house here, I, I use a little bit more vanilla because my husband loves vanilla. So you take the entire thing, you put it on the fire, and we are going to simmer that for 15 minutes or so. So while it's boiling, we are going to make ice cream. So for the ice cream, you need a powerful blender. In my case in here, I have a Vitamix. I don't know how people were cooking prior to the Vitamix. So in the Vitamix, you are going to use your silken tofu. Why the silken tofu? The silken tofu will give it the, will give it the silkiness and also another uh, tip. If you haven't had your legume during the day, you want to have your legume every day. So this is another way of having some uh, legumes because soy, tofu is out of soy, is a legume and it's very good for absolutely everybody. So you will take half of that silken tofu in your Vitamix, I'm making a mess here. Of course, you get the water out and then and then you will take one or two dates because I am making raspberry here, which will be a little bit tart. So I'll use two dates in the Vitamix. And my frozen vegetables and the, any frozen vegetables that you like. My husband, I sent him to get him the berry. He got the raspberry. So there is the raspberry in there. And I am going to make noise. So I will mute myself. He's putting in the work there. As you can see, in less than two minutes, I have ice cream. This is an ice cream here. Zero, zero cholesterol, 
zero added sugar, zero milk, 100% whole food plant-based. And let me tell you something, it is just delicious. Okay. Let me turn. <laughs> you wanted to say something, Sandra? Sandra? Oh, I, I'm just hoping that um, this is re being recorded so we can go back if we didn't have a chance to make it alongside of you. Yeah, it's recorded. And uh, for, during, for class, for example, at the end of every class, I send you the recipe because it's very easy because all you have to do is see it done once. It's like, oh, okay. So after you've seen this one done once and you do it once, do you think that you'll keep on doing it? Yes, sustainable. Okay, now let's come back to our English poach egg, uh, poach. So you boil it. So it's still boiling for 15 minutes roughly. So we can have a conversation while it's boiling. Celine, this is Melissa. Hi, Melissa. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I love your tofu, tofu, oh, I can't talk, tofu um, eggs. The magic eggs. <laughs> they are so good. Yeah, did you get the, so you didn't get the chance to do the, the, uh, the poached eggs thing. It is so delicious. I made it yesterday uh, to prep for the class to make sure that the directions will be good. It's easy, but it's not something that you're, you're going to eat very often because at the end of the day, concentrated apple juice is still loaded with sugar. But for the holidays, instead of going there with you know, things that are not healthy, it is a very, very healthy dessert that you, know, you can make and you bring, you bring along. And so for the seven weeks, for the seven weeks program during the holiday, you know, uh, we will make, the, the idea is to teach people how to get rid of sugar. So you get rid of sugar the first week. And then every week, actually, we'll make a small, tiny dessert because holidays are for dessert. But how do we have healthy dessert? But you know, we'll, we'll make different things like a soup, uh, cornbread, uh, a chili, all of those holiday meals that we need to make so that when you go into somebody, you can come with a, cus uh, a chili, for example, and cornbread, and your own salad dressing so that you can eat with everybody without going for all the things that are going to load it your system and get out of there with uh, guilt. So when, uh -oh. I can attest that the chili and cornbread is very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, Okay, so here, a few more minutes. Go, go ahead, Melissa. Do you have any question, Melissa, while we're waiting for the pair to cook? If you don't have a Vitamix, can you just use a normal blender while it tastes as good, the ice so cream? The, the Vitamix is powerful. So if your blender is powerful, because if your blender is powerful and it can make it smooth, because the idea, especially when you have children or husband or that are very picky, it's like, oh yeah, feel the grain. The Vitamix enable you to smooth everything so they can enjoy it. So, so try your Vita, try, I know um, I have a customer who used the Ninja. And I know that my sister has a Ninja. When I was in Colorado, I used it. It was a little bit tough, but try it, play with it. Play with it to see uh, what you can do with it. If not, for Christmas, <laughs> give yourself a Vitamix. <laughs> <laughs> no, my daughter wants one too, so we think we need to get one. I bought this years ago. This is the, uh, I have a few things in my kitchen that I do not regret buying. It's my Vitamix, my dehydrator. Those two things, a little bit pricey, but it's worth every single 
penny. Yeah. Because with that Vitamix, I make my own flour, I make my own butter, I make my own milk, I make my own salad dressing, I make my own ice cream, I make my own sorbet, I make my own, I make my own. <laughs> <laughs> and it is very, very, very and the, the, what I love about the Vitamix is it's so powerful. It is very, very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Actually, I should have asked Vitamix to give me some money on this. Trip. Right, you should have. You still can. Okay, so here, the pear now is soft enough. So I'm going to remove them. So the secret for the, uh, for the um, ice cream, uh, Melissa, is your tofu. And this is also, you know, my sister, for example, you have to basically tie her up, close her nose to give her tofu to eat. But by eating the tofu, like with your ice cream, this is another way of eating tofu with that feeling that you're eating tofu. Because once it's in there, it's finished. So it's like, wow, here goes, you know, um, action for the hot flashes. Here I I get my legumes and I am having ice cream, which at the end of the day, I'm just having some berries. <laughs> I am just having some fresh berries, period, in another form. What it is that my body is not going to like? There's nothing not to like about it. <laughs> so uh, after you remove the, um, the, uh, the pears, now you boil the rest of the water. You re, it's basically to reduce it so that it become a little bit like caramel. So at that point, you know, it becomes sugar. And then you'll put it on it. So it become another way of having pears and a, a, a dessert for the holidays. And if you love clove, you put more clove in it. If you love... Um, Cinnamon, you put more cinnamon in it. And I love ginger. So when I make it, I, I, after it's done, I put some fresh ginger. I grate the ginger, I put it in there. And when I put it on the, on the pears in there, it's like, oh, la, la. <laughs> and this is one of the tricks of eating this way. You're going to see recipes. A recipe is somebody giving you some guidelines. And they've, they've, done, they've given you the measurements for what works for them. You have, once you take it, you make it to your own taste. For example, if I didn't like, uh, if somebody has given me that recipe with cardamom, I wouldn't have used cardamom. I, I, cardamom, we're still flirting. But I love nutmeg, so I will load it with nutmeg. I will load it with ginger. Be quiet, it's my food. And my food has to be good. My food has to be tasty. So in a few minutes, it will be done. I'll show you the results. And then uh, at the end of this call, I will send you the recipe so you can make it and you have to let me know. <laughs> Any other questions? We have time here. Hi, Celine. It's Laura. I'm so sorry you can't see me because you would probably all faint because I look so bad right now, like something the dog drug in, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm here, here with heart. <laughs> Any, anyway, I am. Um, full of love like yours, you will never look bad. Love oh. never looks bad and you reflect <laughs> love. So no, you will never look bad. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, what I wanted to say is, yes, there's all sorts of recipes and you are an amazing cook. What this is about for those that know somebody or it fits them is really a lifestyle program. And many of us, like she said earlier, you know, there could be a trillion or whatever recipes out there. And that's great. That's good to incorporate them. Yet the difference is having uh, an expert that tailors things to you because not everybody can use all the things in the recipe. Somebody might have an allergy to this. She'll give you the alternative. But the key thing is the accountability 
and also, um, you know, watching what transforms in one's life when they make these changes. And so her walking it through with people, we all know for the most part, we don't. And what's amazing is when those diseases that really want to take us down, disable us longer term, uh, you know, be it diabetes, type two, of course, is different than type one, be it cholesterol, all of those. Um, you know, being able to take it with lifestyle medicine and also mentally, she's right. The, the brain is in the gut. A lot of people don't know that. So doing all of those with accountability and through encouragement with Celine, or like I think she said in a group, there's just a total difference between that and getting recipes. So I encourage that she recorded this, either join her program or, um, also to, um, you know, pass this along to other people uh, that are struggling in these medications. They need medications to take care of the side effects from this medication or last thing. And I'm, I'm not trying to just be a, you know, buy, buy, buy this thing. But what I'm trying to say is, is that you've already seen online how many of these medications for blood sugar and blood pressure are being recalled. You know, that's scary, I think. And so if there's an alternative to help the body heal itself, which it's intended to do, how much better that might be. So that's, that's my two cents. Thank you, Laura. I haven't, I didn't pay her. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I just know lifestyle is something uh, that I've had to do for years. Um, I used to have uh, body pain and all of these things, we're, we're so interconnected, people. That's, that's what I'm trying to get across, um, you know, to, to do that. And so we all know somebody for sure that's struggling in their cholesterol or their blood sugar. And that cholesterol medicine a long time ago when my husband tried it nearly killed him. And it, you know, can give you muscle problems. So, you know, sometimes medication is needed. Okay, that's just reality. But if possible, where we can help the body heal itself, that's why I am a big cheerleader for Celine. It's fun and it's tasty at the same time. So anyway, I'll shut up and let other people ask their questions. <laughs> okay. And uh, Beth, Celine, you have another question in the chat. Okay, just give me one sec, one question, and I will handle this. So here is how it is when you have reduced it. So it's basically a caramel sauce that I am going to, that you basically nicely put on top of uh, your pears. Mm, I'm hungry already. So you can have holiday foods and you don't have to, to uh, it doesn't have to be unhealthy. So here it is, the final version. Uh, this is how one will look like, you see, it's dripping in here with the uh, apple sauce. Reduce in here. Okay, now I'm going to take a small bite and I'll let you know how it tastes. Mm. I still want my ginger. Okay, thank you. Um, go ahead, Boo, you have a question. Um, the question is, do you have any recipes that include plantains? Do I have any recipes that include plantain? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, plantain, the way I eat my plantain, I take it. Well, this one is all green, but I usually like them uh, right yellow. And I roast them <laughs> and I'll eat it with my chili. Or I will boil it and I'll eat it with my chili or um, yeah, those are how I do my, my plantain. So if you have any recipes, Shade, with plantain that you enjoy and that you'd like to clean up, let me know and I'll show you how a recipe that you enjoy, you can make it healthier. Did I answer your question, Shade? 
Um, yes, it was kind of one of these um, trick questions because I've had your plantain. <laughs> <laughs> And I love your plantain. And I haven't been able to emulate your recipe. So I was trying to find Which one did you have? Oh, it was with the sauce. It was some sort of a pepper sauce with it. Oh. The way you sauteed it. And see, what I do is use butter. And I think I, I use too much butter. I don't know. Okay. I'm you know okay, so I know what I know what you're talking about. You I, I made you a loco with a tomato sauce. Mm-hmm. A loco is deep fried. So yeah. uh, I don't do deep fried anymore. So when I have a taste for a loco, I will roast that banana in the oven. Yeah. So is it still with the skin on it or is it just no, 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 roasted without the skin? the skin? You remove the skin. So I will uh. put it in the oven mm. and I will make my tomato sauce without oil because I know now how to saute onions without salt. And, um, to, and if I want to have that fishy, flavor because sometimes mm -hmm. we add some fish uh, fish powder in it i use oh. um, um seaweed in it oh, it's yeah. all blue. i learned that by accident it was all wow. blue. Blue. I'm like, so yeah. I, I put some seaweed in there so i have that flavor fishy flavor type of things and then with my ripe roasted plantain i dip it in there i have a loco without the oil so that substitutes for the shrimp, the dried shrimp. Yes. I learned that by accident not too long ago. I was making a no crash sauce mm -hmm. and uh, I had some seaweed and I love to eat my seaweed and you've learned to talk about you know, the power of omega-3. Mm -hmm. I put it in there and, the, and I'm like, oh, it tastes like fish. <laughs> wow, okay, okay, yeah. okay. No, I am going to stop the recording. Uh, this part of the program is over, is finished. And I'm going to stay here 